Hello there. I wish to teach you all about the CDSU or current dominant scientific understanding of the desert tree frog, also known as the Tora rubella. A lot of animals change the structure or the way they look and act in order to protect themselves from predators. It's called adaptations, and there's a lot of adaptations in the world. Some animals create heart spikes on the back, or some birds develop hollow bones so that they can take off and fly. There is a lot of interesting and fun things to know about the, this particular frog. Like did you know that it has developed special features where it can hide itself from other animals, as well as use it to find and sneak up on its own delicious and yummy food? It's not a superpower. We call it camouflage, and that's how this frog has adapted to protect itself. This particular frog is about as big as a tennis ball, and its colour is brown, black, with hints of yellows and reds. Why you ask? The environment or the area where this frog lives is very tree filled and the colour of the frog skin matches with the bark and all the ground too. Camouflage doesn't work if the colour of the frog and the colour of the trees are just distractedly different. The frog has evolved and adapted to look similar to its environment. The frog does, doesn't just decide that it wants to be brownish, but over time it grew to fit its surroundings. Every animal has a predator that wants to eat them. The desert tree frog defends itself with camouflage. It's very hard for a bird to eat a frog if they can't see them. How clever is that? It is essential in the engage phase that you create interest in the topic, listen to students' understanding and identify their alternative conceptions. To create interest in the topic and find out what they know, students will work in groups to create an environment using their coloured pencils to demonstrate what environment is suitable for the Litteria rubella frog to survive in. Alternative conceptions can be identified by looking at the end product from each group and reading the sentences they have written to describe their artwork. The things a teacher should remember to do is write the focus question on the board, Provide an image of the Litteria rubella frog and place it on the whiteboard. And remember not to tell students what to do, what is right and what is wrong. To ensure student safety, the teacher will provide instruction on rules, safety procedures, safe handling of objects and prerequisite skills before students begin the activity. For this activity, there is little chance of incident or injury. It will be managed by firstly checking students' knowledge on behaviour management and safety procedures in the lab. Reminders to walk around the room safely and are also reminding students not to put any of the materials in their mouths, such as paper frogs, paper birds and the straws. There will be adult supervision, this being the teacher and the teacher aides, which are specifically for the students with disabilities. Each of the teachers will have first aid and their CPR qualifications. As future educators, we will be challenged to ensure all students are included and that any modifications required for special needs students are made. In our current class, we have four students who have special needs. The first student we are making adjustments for has an auditory processing disorder. This is when the brain has problems processing the information contained in sounds such as understanding speech and locating where sounds are coming from. The second student that we are catering for has an intellectual impairment, specifically autistic spectrum disorder. Autistic spectrum disorder, also known as ASD, is a lifelong developmental condition that affects an individual's way of thinking and how they interact with their environment and other people. The third student that we have made modifications for within our classroom is a student that has a physical impairment, which is cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy refers to a disorder that affects a person's ability to move. It affects their way of movement, speech, balance, and much more. 
Finally, one of our other students is facing a vision impairment, which refers to a limitation of one or more functions of the eye. This student has a low visual acuity, and this refers to a condition caused by eye disease where it may be corrected or improved with the assistance of regular glasses. It is important that we cater for these students to ensure that they develop the same knowledge and understanding as the other students and aren't being disadvantaged. To cater for a student with an auditory processing disorder, a way to modify activities for them in a classroom could be by having the student sitting at the front of the classroom so they have a clear view of the teacher. Here is an example of one of the modifications for this particular student. It is important to ensure that when writing on the whiteboard, the ink is in blue or black as it makes it easier for the student to see. This quick video highlights that the red ink and small writing is hard to see for the student whilst writing in black or blue ink makes it clear and easier for them to read. Ways to cater for a student with Autistic Spectrum Disorder ASD, in a classroom is to take the student to the classroom earlier to get them to familiarise themselves with the steps of the lesson so they don't get stressed out during the activities. Also to establish and encourage eye contact with the student to ensure they're engaged in all the classroom discussions. And other ways by assigning a buddy to the student to help encourage and engage them. And give verbal questions to keep reminders short so the student is able to grasp an understanding of it. This quick video is an example of catering for a student with an autistic spectrum disorder. This is to show that it is important to have rules slash instructions written somewhere such as on the whiteboard so that the student can reflect back on to it if they need to. This is so they don't get stressed confused as students with ASD have different ways of thinking. Adjustments that could be made for a student with cerebral palsy is by ensuring that the student has a clear view of the teacher when he or she speaks, to ensure there is enough space for the student if they are using a wheelchair, so clear any obstacles, and also assign students with a teacher's aid to help read out their answers if they need assistance. This is an example of one of the adjustments that was stated previously for a student with cerebral palsy. This quick video shows an example of the adjustment of a person using a laptop to type their hypothesis rather than handwriting due to their physical impairment. Ways to adjust the lesson for a student with a vision impairment is by limiting any distraction so the student is able to focus on the activity and any classroom discussions. Also, ensure that concrete resources are easy to differentiate, such as using different textures and different colours. Also, another one could be by having a teacher's aid with the student to help them scribe if they have to write a hypothesis, or to assign them with a buddy to help the students translate any notes written on the board or even on pictures. For a child that has a vision impairment, an example that was mentioned previously stated that by using different materials for the activity, it would make it easier for the students to differentiate. This is a picture of different frogs that will be used throughout the explore phase in the lesson plan. The assessment task chosen is a diagnostic worksheet that students complete in the evaluate phase of their lesson. Given as the students have done the activity, discussed the concept of camouflage and explored their scientific question, the worksheet helps guide the students' thinking in the events that took place in the activity. Using the worksheet to mentally work their way through all they have learned allows the students to document their knowledge in a concrete way and allows the teacher to use the task as a tangible piece of diagnostic evidence for students at marking time. Questions are based from what they have learnt throughout the activity and each of the phases. The worksheet works progressively where questions 1 and 2 are generally about what does camouflage mean and what is an adaption, which would be learnt in the engaged phase of the lesson. Questions 3 and 4 are more about the scientific question they were trying to discover, which is how does the Australian native littorial rubella frog survive in the desert?
The last question is a more experiential and test the student's understanding of the CDSU. The worksheet is based around a spiralling assessment much like the ACARA system where knowledge is grown and becomes more complex and abstract. The second aspect that plays a part in the assessment is the criteria sheet. Given as the activity is very basic and does not require much assessment, the criteria sheet is based around the knowledge and skills of the CDSU displayed in the worksheet, which encompasses the learning throughout each of the phases. The questions in Worksheet 2 are specifically linked to each criteria table so that students know exactly how to mark the, each of their questions based on the criteria provided. The criteria sheet is student friendly and meant to be used by the students for peer or self-assessment. Although the criteria sheet is student friendly, it still links to the elaborations for the content descriptor which is Living things have structural features and adaptations that help them to survive in their environment. Therefore, it is still a valid criteria table that can be used by teachers.